Hi everyone. So I want to do one more very famous example of a proof by contradiction, um, which is goes back to Euclid, who um, lived in Alexandria, Egypt, sometime in the early part of the first millennium. And uh, he's most famous for his work in geometry, but he also, uh, in his in his book, laid the foundations for number theory, study of prime numbers and divisibility and things like that. So um, this this uh, this proof is is maybe the second most famous uh, proof after the proof of the irrationality of of the square root of two. So it's a proof by contradiction. So let's take a look at it. So I'm in a need, uh, as always, to to rely on some facts. And the most important fact that I'm going to have to rely on for this proof is that every integer can be written as a product of prime numbers. And in particular, every integer greater than one has a prime divisor. So if you have a number, it's either prime or it's divisible by a prime. Uh, I hope you believe this. Um, if you take elementary number theory and you do this more systematically, you would uh, you would prove this more carefully. But we're going to just take that for granted. And if you pre are prepared to believe that, then uh, the proposition that's true is that there are infinitely many prime numbers. And the proof goes like this. So we're going to do it by contradiction. So we start by assuming that, it, that there are not infinitely many prime numbers, that we assume there's finitely many. And if there's only finitely many prime numbers, we could, in principle, write them down. If there's, you know, a billion of them, we would have p a billion. And that would be the whole list. We don't know how many there really are, but it's a finite list. And if there's a finite list of numbers, you can multiply all those numbers together and make a really gigantic number. And I'm going to let capital P be the number that you would get by multiplying together all of the prime numbers that exist, of which we're, we're temporarily assuming that there's only finitely many. And then we're going to take that gigantic number, we're going to add one to it. And now this is a number. It's a very big number, but it's a number. And remember that we said that every integer every has to have a prime divisor. And that prime divisor has to be greater than one because the prime numbers are all greater than one. They start with two and they go up from there. So let's factor out this prime divisor and write capital P plus one is little p times some number a. Here a is, is just whatever you get when you divide this big number by p. We don't know what it is. Now, so that's sort of our, remember, we're trying to construct a contradiction. So this is going to be our the first part of our contradiction, or at least in the direction of it. And now that's the second thing is we go back to our big number P. And P, we got P by multiplying all the prime numbers together. And this prime divisor P, little p, must be one of those because... Big P is the product of all the prime numbers. So that means little p must be a divisor of big P. So we should be able to factor out little p from big P as well and write big P is little p times B. B is the product of all the other prime numbers except for little p. Well, now remember that big P plus 1 is little p times A. So if we subtract big P, whoops, big P from this equation, we get big P, we get one is big little P times A minus big P, but big P is P times B. So that's P times A minus P times B or P times A minus B. Well, now look what we've got. On the left-hand side of the equation, we have one. And on the right-hand side, we have P times something. So P is a divisor of one. And actually, since since it, P is a positive number, A minus B must also be a positive number. And they would therefore kind of both have to be one, right? The only divisors of one is R1. So we conclude here that P has to equal one. Now, that's a contradiction in a lot of ways. Uh, it's supposed to be a prime. And it can't be, a, if it's a prime, it can't be equal to one. But even more fundamentally, it's a contradiction because now we've shown that p is equal to 1 and p is bigger than 1. And both of those things can't be true. So we've deduced a contradiction from our assumption that there are only finitely many prime numbers. And therefore, the original thing that we assumed, that there were only finitely many prime numbers, must be false. So there must be infinitely many prime numbers.
So that's Euclid's proof. Uh, in the introduction section, I asked people if they would, what they might remember from another course in 10 years. If you were gonna go on in life and never look at mathematics again after you graduate, and you remember this proof of the infinitude of the number of primes and how it works, then as a sort of piece of cultural knowledge, it's a very, uh, it's a valuable thing. And uh, I'd be happy under those circumstances.